Welcome back to another episode of the Even Your Dynasty show. We are finally getting the minor league update video out. I appreciate the patience from everyone. The plan originally was to post this video Monday night. Um, unfortunately, we had a giant Xfinity outage here that lasted over 24 hours. So we are just now getting the video recorded. It is now Tuesday night. So apologize for the uh, delay on this one. One thing to keep in mind, actually two things to keep in mind on this video. Um, I'm not going to include any players that are at the major league level. I'm mainly focusing on the guys on the top 30 list. And then I will sprinkle in a few guys, especially because we're talking about the River Cats games from this weekend. So there's a few guys that have been either recent prospects that have graduated the list or, um, you know, could contribute potentially later on in the season. So I'll, I'll add those people in as well. But so the guys that are, are, are on the Giants top 30 list that are um, currently playing in San Francisco, so they won't be included, are going to be uh, obviously their number one prospect, Kyle Harrison, their number 12 prospect, Landon Roop, number 20 prospect, Tyler Fitzgerald, their number 24 prospect, Kaiwei Tang, and their number 29 prospect, Eric Miller. Those five guys are going to be left off this list. Um, they will get talked about in other episodes when we're talking about um, the big league club. So uh, starting off, so the River Cats played three games this weekend. Uh, they had to play a doubleheader on Sunday. Uh, they did take two of three. They lost one game in extra innings, uh, the second game on Sunday. And uh, as of this recording, they've actually played the first game against Reno, but I am leaving out the stats um, and not going to touch too much on those um, from that game because that's going to be, I'm doing the weekly video, so it'll be on next week's video. Uh, but starting off, their number two prospect in Sacramento, Marco Luciano, um, overall took a two for six with two walks and three strikeouts, uh, played in two games, played a clean shortstop. So that was the positive note. Uh, the first game, it's kind of funny. You see the overreaction amongst Giants fans where the first game he goes over three with a walk um, and three strikeouts. And all I saw across any kind of social media was seeing Giants fans saying, Oh, he's not ready. Here's the proof. And then the very next game, he goes two for three with a walk. So, and and he actually had another pretty good game today. So, uh, it, it's just funny how the you know it's baseball. It, we're looking at things. We have to look at them over big sample sizes. You know, one game does not mean a guy is or is not ready. Um, but the one thing I do hope to see with him is I'm, I'm hoping to see the strikeouts kind of limited because if he puts the ball in play, I think most of us are pretty confident that he's going to be a pretty good player if he can do that consistently. So uh, now we're going to get kind of to the good stuff, which I think was the biggest bright spot of the Giants weekend was their starting pitching, um, starting with Carson Wisenhunt, who is their number three prospect, another top 100 guy. Uh, three innings pitched, six strikeouts, only allowed one hit. He retired nine out of the 10 batters he faced. He forced seven swing and misses on his changeup, which is a 70 grade changeup, which is truly elite uh, when it comes to the grading system for scouts. And it plays like it. I mean, it, it's filthy. He might honestly, um, that fastball changeup combination, because his fastball did touch 96, was what it peaked at. He was kind of steady at 94 95 but he got it up to 96 and that change up off of that it might be the best two pitch combination in, in their system right now i mean it's really that is really good pitch um through 44 pitches so he was really efficient 28 for strikes so he had an excellent outing he was the first pitcher that threw in the double header on sunday uh their number eight prospect mason black five innings pitched five k's four hits through 68 pitches, 49 for strikes. So another guy that was really efficient. Now, the hard thing was, is he piggybacked this. Um, he, he had this outing pretty close to the same time that uh, Dalton Jeffries was getting lit up in San, in San Diego. So it's kind of tough. Um, I, you know, I touched on it on the previous episode. I, I understand why they made the decision they did to an extent, but I do think that he would have 
helped overall on the on the season and it would have been worth putting Mason Black on that 40 man spot because I do think he would have if there were injuries and whatnot he he's a guy that could have filled in and actually gone five or six innings potentially um so but he was really good only had to really pitch around trouble once and it was a two out triple that he allowed and he got out of the inning struck out the struck out the guy and got out of the inning um fastball wasn't you know he he does normally touch 92 to 94 seemed like his fastball was sitting around 91 and he was throwing it kind of as a sinker sometimes he'd he he gets it up in the zone it doesn't really sink it plays pretty live um but he looked really good uh overall so threw a lot of strikes attacked the zone guys just weren't hitting him which is it's a good sign because he's a guy that i think his stuff could play in the majors. So hopefully we'll see him at some point this season. Uh, but he had a really good one. Uh, their number 18 prospect, Carson Seymour. He actually pitched the opener on Saturday. Uh, three and two thirds innings, four Ks, five hits, a walk, um, 59 pitches, 39 for strikes. He did kind of have to grind through the game, but you know, he battled, looked really good throws. Um, kind of mid to upper nineties. Uh, he, he'll hit 95 to 97 sometimes. And, it, you know, he, he had a really solid, solid game. Um, so we will move past him. Uh, the other guy that pitcher that did show up was RJ Dabovich. He's their number 23 prospect through one and a third innings, one K two walks, he struggled with his command a little bit, but another guy that battled through it and uh, had a clean slate. You know, these are all guys. None, none of them allowed any earned runs. You know, they they have four top one hundred. Sorry, not top one hundred. They have four top thirty prospects in Sacramento that are pitchers right now, and all four pitched clean outings. So it was good start for them. And uh, last couple guys we're gonna get to. Uh, Elliot Ramos, these guys aren't on the um, top 30 list anymore. Elliot Ramos is the first one. Two for eight, home run, three strikeouts. Uh, the home run was a two-run shot to tie the game in extras. They were down two in the uh, in extra innings. He hit the two-run home run to tie it back up. They ended up losing the game anyway, but it was 107-mile-per-hour exit velocity, and he hit it to almost 430 feet to center field. I mean, it was an impressive swing. And, uh, you know, once again, we'll see how he ends up doing in Sacramento this season. If he dominates it again, kind of like last season, uh, you know, at some point they're going to need to get a look or they're going to need to trade him because this is his last option year. So something to keep in mind, but he has, when he makes contact and he barrels the ball, it's as impressive as anybody in the system, I would think. So another, and it was just another example of that. So that was good to see a uh, guy that struggled was Casey Schmidt one for 11 with three strikeouts. Now, the one thing I will say is Casey Schmidt kind of had a case of the nothing is going right for him right now. Um, it, it, he wasn't putting together like every, you know, it's not like they were all just terrible at bats or anything like that. He had a game where he actually hit two line drives that were just smoked and they went right to the outfielder and they just hung up and a guy literally didn't even move on one of them. And you, he was visibly frustrated after it because had a couple balls that he clearly hit really hard and they just went at people and it happens, you know, hopefully he just keeps hitting the ball hard and some of these hits will start falling for him. But um, you know, that one for 11 very easily could have been a four for 11 the way he was swinging it. So uh, you know, better days to come, hopefully for him and he'll start, you know, getting out of his funk a little bit. Uh, but he did on a positive note, he played a very clean third base the entire time, uh, made some impressive plays. He actually made one where it's the, uh, where when he ranges in uh, at third kind of towards the third baseline and picks it up and throws it across the diamond on the run, looks very Chapman like, uh, on those throws or on those plays. So you can see why at third base, he is one of the best defensive third base prospects in baseball. Hopefully the bat just catches up for him though. So there was positives for Schmidt. Uh, the last one is going to be Brett Wisely. 
didn't play a ton, two for four with a home run. It was actually a walk-off home run on the opening day uh, and a walk, a strikeout, and he stole a base. Uh, he is probably, in my opinion, uh, the next man up, so to speak, if Tyler Fitzgerald falls on his face. Uh, and I say that because he's another utility guy that can kind of play three spots in the infield as well as center field. Um, and he gives him kind of some flexibility and he's actually a left-handed bat. He struggled a ton last year. I think it was very clear in the majors that he was not ready, but you can see why they like him, um, where he's really, really good defensively. He's got some pop, so he's intriguing there and the speed also. So it's, it's understandable that he's an intriguing prospect for the giants. So um, and then some just kind of my other thoughts on this, um, you know, last season, the River Cats as a whole struggled. And, you know, one thing I was kind of thinking about is the Giants lower minor level or minor league teams, like the lower level teams, they do tend to do pretty well. Uh, the San Jose Giants and the Eugene Emeralds, their A-ball teams, they often are in competing for the the league championships in their leagues. So the River Cats though, they're constantly like losing record almost every year it feels like. And you look at the Dodgers, the OKC Dodgers, that's their Triple A team, and it seems like they often are competing for the championship and you just you look at it and it's like you have the Dodgers who are super talented organization they're they're top to bottom like their roster is stacked and then it pushes a lot of talent down to triple a and that means they have usually a lot of talent down in triple a and their triple a team ends up being really good and it would be nice to see the giants triple a team now obviously i care more about the big league team i want to see the, the you know i want to see the giants do really well but it would also be a really nice sign if the giants could be you know a playoff team and to see the River Cats potentially actually be like a really solid team, because that would mean that they probably have a good amount of talent down there. And now, you know, Luis Matos is going to be down there for however long. Um, hopefully not too long, because I, I it, unfortunately it's been six games and I'm already wearing thin on both Yaz and Slater at the moment. But hopefully they start hitting because it's been ugly between the two of them. Um, but there, there's a lot of talent in triple a, so some things to just, just kind of food for thought on that one. Uh, they did release the, the Richmond flying squirrels, double a roster, the Eugene Emeralds, high a roster and the San Jose rosters. Um, there are some exciting talent on all of them. Uh, the double a roster is pretty exciting as far as, um, the double a roster is pretty exciting as far as outfielders go. Uh, pretty stacked there. Von Brown is staying in double A. Hunter Bishop got moved up to double A. Victor Barracoto is over in double A. He might play some first base, I'm guessing. Um, and then also Grant McRae is in double A. So if anything, they're going to have, if they play Bishop, McRae, and Brown, they're going to probably have the most range of any outfield in baseball at the moment. Um, so kind of pretty intriguing there. Uh, the pitching in AAA is really intriguing. I think the Giants organization as a whole is getting really close to the floodgates just opening on these young pitchers. Obviously, they have a handful currently on the big league roster with Harrison and Roop and then a couple of these relievers. Um, but, you know, you look at AAA and you got Wizenhunt, Black, Seymour. Uh, then you go down to AA and you have Birdsong, Ragsdale. Um, there's, there's a lot and, you know, we don't know where Reggie Crawford's going to end up starting. It sounds like he's doing an extended spring training. Same thing with Walker Martin and, uh, Rainer Arias are doing an extended spring training. So they're not going to join, uh, any of the organized clubs for however long I, I, I don't have, there hasn't really been any word there, but we'll see kind of what it ends up being. Uh, but you know, there, it's pretty intriguing there in double a, and then, you go down to a ball right now in San Jose. And I mean, I would recommend anybody down there you know, get, try and get to one of those games because there's a ton of talent down there. You have Joe Whitman, obviously Bryce Eldridge is there for however long. I think he's a guy they're going to be aggressive with. And if he gets off to a hot start, he might move up even in only just a couple weeks. Um, but you have Maui Ahuna there. 
I imagine Arias and Martin are going to end up there soon. Um, Guillermo Williamson, he hit the snot out of the ball in the ACL last year. Um, so there's a lot of intriguing players. Check them out. You know, the, especially between San Jose and Sacramento, the two closer teams, they, they have a lot of talent between the two of them. So, you know, I don't know how many of you have been to minor league games, but I have. They're cheap. They're fun. Uh, and it's, you know, you get, you get really good seats and like, I've gone to a few triple games and it's like 20 bucks a pop. So the, you know, it's really, it's a good experience. It's a fun experience and you get to see some pretty exciting players and it's, it's really high quality baseball as a whole. So check it out. But that's all I have for this one. Uh, the future episodes will probably be a little longer. I mean, I, I try and typically keep these to, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, but, um, these minor league updates will probably end up dragging a little longer. Fair warning, all uh, in the future episodes when we have multiple, I'm going to kind of go through it um, by level. So I'll try and put chapters in there and uh, say kind of like which, you know, and mark like triple A, double A, high A, A ball, and so on. Um, that way everybody can, you know, if there's certain guys you're wanting to hear, you can kind of skip around to get to it. But as always, if you like the video and you like this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate all the support from everybody. It's been awesome. If you guys have any videos and topics that you want me to discuss um, this week, let me know. Uh, drop it in the comments. I'll definitely do that. Um, if there is anything, you know, if you guys like this kind of stuff and you want more, you know, minor league stuff, definitely let me know. I, I, I've been in watching as much of those games as I can, um, as long as they're not kind of running right at the same time as a Giants game. I'll usually be how I'll have it on um, and flip around between them. So I try and give my thoughts on how these guys look because I, I don't I feel like that's not out there all the time. So tell me what you guys think. And other than that, you know, unfortunately, the Giants just dropped the second game to the Dodgers. Hopefully they can win tomorrow behind Harrison. It would be really nice to at least get out of there win one of the games uh, and get back home and start getting Oracle Park roaring. So appreciate it, everybody. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Go Giants.